This is Colleen from Keeping the Peace Defensive Handgun Training for Women. And today I want to talk to you a little bit more about racking the slide. I did a video previously on how to rack the slide like a lady. And I want to go over today a little bit more detail about what's going on inside the gun when you do rack the slide. Because a lot of ladies are intimidated by certain actions they perform to the gun because they don't really know what they're doing. They know it's a physical motion, but they don't know what's behind it or what it's actually doing inside the gun. So I just wanted to go over that today and try to get it up close on camera so that you can see what's going on on the inside. So the first thing I'll do is unload my firearm. I'll just show you that the chamber's empty. Magazine well is empty. And I'm just going to take an empty magazine and put a few snap caps in it. I'm going to use blue ones so that they're a little bit more visible. We'll just put a few. Okay. I'm going to insert the magazine and then you'll be able to see in the ejection port with the slide locked to the rear, you can see the magazine after it's seated in the handgun, the round that is in the top of the magazine is visible there in the ejection port right here, still in the top of the magazine. So what's going to happen is when I do rack the slide, which is pulling it rearward and letting it go forward, um, using the tension of the spring to drive it forward, I'm actually going to see that the bolt face, which is this flat side back here where your firing pin comes out, is going to push the edge or the back side of the casing forward and then the nose of the cartridge here is going to go up the feed ramp and into the chamber. When I say feed ramp, I'm talking about, and it's dirty unfortunately, I need to clean my gun, but I'm talking about this little ramp that leads up into the chamber. So the nose of the cartridge is going to just go right up the ramp into the chamber. That's why a lot of times when people have feeding problems with their handguns, they'll do something called polishing the feed ramp. That's just taking out any kind of burrs or um, roughage areas there that can impede the cartridge's ability to slide up the ramp into the chamber. So I'm going to actually try to rack this slowly so that you can watch that cartridge move. It's going to push it up the ramp and into the chamber. Now, when the gun is fired, if it's actually a live round, after you drop the hammer on it, there's a little explosion that happens on the inside of that cartridge that when the primer is ignited, which causes the bullet to fly forward out of the gun, that same amount of pressure is going to come back and drive the slide to the rear. When it does, the extractor is going to grab the edge of the casing it's going to yank the casing out, and then the slide's going to go back forward, performing that same action from before, which is pushing the top cartridge out of the magazine back into the chamber. So hopefully you can see all of that as it's working on the inside. I'll do that one more time. So it's going to go into the rear. It's going to be ejected, which just hit your lens. And then the cartridge is going to be pushed forward up out of the magazine, up the feed ramp, and into the chamber. All right, now I'm going to cycle the slide and you're going to see the extractor is going to grab the rim of the cartridge and pull it out. I'm going to try to do it slowly. It's going to pull it out of the chamber. It's going to fling it out to the side when it hits the ejector. And then when I let it go forward, it's going to take that back side of the cartridge. It's going to push it forward out of the magazine. The nose is going to travel up the feed ramp and then it's going to go into the chamber again. So this is going to happen repeatedly every time I press the trigger on a semi-automatic firearm. That process is going to continue to happen over and over. Okay, so reset trigger, drop hammer, the slide cycles, it grabs the rim of the cartridge, the, the extractor grabs the rim of the cartridge, and it pulls it out, I'm trying to go slowly, pulls it out of the chamber, and then it hits the ejector, which causes it to fling out. The bolt face presses the back of the cartridge, the nose travels up the feed ramp and presses it into the chamber again. Okay, I already showed you the feed ramp, which is here. And then your bolt face, this back side area here, this flat area. Okay, this back flat area here is your bolt face. And right here, this little hook area is your extractor. 
that's what grabs the edge of the casing and pulls it out of the chamber when the slide is moved into the rearward position. As it's bringing it back out of the chamber, the back side of the cartridge strikes this little post that's sitting here, which is your ejector. So as the edge of the casing hits the ejector, it causes it to fly out in the opposite direction, which is toward the right. So that's why your casings fly out that direction and why your ejection port is cut out on that side. So I hope that helps. Um, boy, I really see that my gun is dirty. <laughs> but I hope that you could see everything that was going on in there. And I hope that that was helpful. So that's actually why we racked the slide. We're taking a cartridge from the magazine up, up the feed ramp and into the chamber of the handgun. That round is fired. Then that round is extracted, ejected, and another round is pushed up out of the magazine, up the feed ramp, into the chamber. That round is fired, and then that same process is repeated over and over every time you press the trigger on a semi-automatic weapon. If you have an automatic weapon, of course, you press the trigger once, and that continues to happen until you either let go of the trigger or you run out of ammunition. So I hope that's helpful. That's the cycling of the ammunition in a semi-automatic. Thanks. God bless.